<laughs> Thanks for making time, uh, Stephen, for today. I know we're both pressed, you particularly putting the installation in at the moment at Bethlehem Gallery. But um, I just wanted to ask you a few questions for this blog on the Chua Alliance uh, website. So I know that the piece has been appearing as a film, as a workshop, and now as an installation, and now as a, another installation. It's easy for someone to fear us. You're, you're trying to live within the context of in the context of someone else's someone else's um, view of black men. There's an assumption. So chart me how the piece came about and um, where it's at now. Well, originally it was it was as a, an installation. A film was kind of created out of that installation. At first it was, I mean, it was many years ago, um, even before I started my training as a psychotherapist, um, I, um, I had an idea that I wanted to work or, or think about um, black men and their, and their mental health. Um, you know, part of that comes from, I think, anyone who is kind of searching in terms of themselves and thinking about, you know, for myself, what does it mean to be a black man? Um, uh, and trying to, to, to understand myself better as well. Um, and I developed a project then, um, which was really thinking about working with black men who have been sectioned uh, to, uh, to find out you know, what was going on there. And then when I um, started to do uh, research, I really started to work out, you know, really, uh, or see like really alarming statistics, um, some, of I heard, some of which I'd heard of before. Um, anyway, I developed a project with um, uh, a psychoanalyst and, and another professor as well, and we or I applied for some funding and that was it was from a uh, pretty well known kind of science funding body and, and it was turned down um, and it was turned down to not only they didn't only say that it was when I got feedback it was it was quite scathing turned down in terms of its biased and and so on and and um, and that was contradictory to, to, to someone else who was kind of supporting me with the application who actually did looked at first round applications as well. Um, anyway, I put it down for a while. Um, and as my practice kind of developed, I, I had a, a feeling that I was trying to do stuff which was more about me again, because a lot of my practice was was becoming like commissions and so on. Um, and I started to get a, a real interest in kind of health, actually, um, and how that kind of um, um, that kind of intersection with 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 culture as well. So um, I did a, a couple of projects, one which was about body donation, one which was about sickle cell. And then I was just thinking, what do I want to do? And I just remembered this project. And at the time, by then I'd been started training as a psychotherapist. And I thought, okay, this is the time to do that. And I, I didn't apply to a science organization. I applied to, to the Arts Council. Um, and also the Mayor's Culture Seeds Fund to get part of the money as well um, for one section of the project. And, and that's how it sort of came about. Um, and the project itself, it started with um, doing workshops, which was, which was what we got the, the, the small pot of money for, um, with um, black men who, of, who many of whom had been sectioned um, and had experience of the mental health system. Some, some had been institutionalized for years and um, we did these kind of poetry and collage making workshops and kind of created the zines. And what was, what was really interesting that came out of that is that at the beginning of the process, I was like, right, get in touch with another organization who could um, support this so that if anyone wanted to um, uh, perform what they had done, they had an opportunity to do that. But what, what came out of it was that that was the most crucial part of the project was actually at the end of it, them really performing and sort of giving them voice um, to kind of speak from their own perspective because there was a real, you know, it was a real kind of process. Um, it was only black men, two black men who were facilitating the process. And then obviously the black men who were taking part and that was quite, um, uh, you know, that was a first for many people to have a space like that, that felt safe, where they could really kind of speak about what they were, they were experiencing, or what they had experienced. Um, and then so we actually put on a showcase, um, and it was well attended. Um, and, 
yeah, and that was that that part of the project. And then the next part of the project was to take um, the um, the symbolic associations derived from both the poetry and the um, uh, and the the collages. Um, and I used my own video library over years of, of filming things in different countries and in different ways, and also Creative Commons. Um, the BFI let, let us have um, one piece of film, which was which was really important. Um, and and it, and creating um, a library of, of footage which was derived directly from their symbolic associations of their experience of of, of their their mind basically um, around um, subjects around um, power and masculinity um, uh, external pressure um, uh, the mental health system and their own personal experiences as well um, and then from that we kind of created the films which then became um, Black Men's Minds, the installation, which was first shown in the BCA, the Black Cultural Archives in Brixton in November 2019. So this was before um, Black Lives Matter uh, coming to prominence and, and, uh, and of course the, the killing of George Floyd. I didn't realise it had uh, such a long evolution and history. Mm. So it's good to see how it's come about and where it's been and where it's going as well. Yeah, I saw it at Black Cultural Archives and it was a very immersive experience. Um, I enjoyed it, but it was quite disturbing at points as well. Mm. So it was it was it was something that you had to experience, I think, and very effective in terms of an installation. I wondered when you were talking about some of the health issues that black men face in relation to culture, that culture can feel quite poisonous as well as restorative and healing and mm. how people um your experience of what it was what it is you want to achieve with this installation in the context of Bethlehem mm. how are you managing to balance um those elements or in recreating it at Bethlehem I mean I think you know it's quite interesting because when I was um studying as a filmmaker um there was a film called Doors to the Dust which was like by a um a, a filmmaker called Julie Dash and I remember reading an interview by her and she said that it was really difficult for a white man to be in the shoes of a black woman a black woman for two and a half hours and that really stuck with me um and it, it stuck with me also for the reasons for for for, for being in a black man's shoes for, for two and a half hours or, or however long. Um, so a, a large part of this was really about um, getting, you know, we talk about black men's mental health, but black men are very, very rarely um, talking about it themselves, their own mental health. And that's for kind of various reasons. Um, intergenerationally, that kind of affects the, the, the culture um, in terms of African and African Caribbean culture. Um, uh, you know, uh, intergenerational trauma, uh, which means that ideas that 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 um, continue within the culture are actually kind of derived from those kind of traumatic experiences. Um, so within the culture, oftentimes um, there are ideas of what it means to be a black man, um, which can be kind of traced um, back to trauma. Um, uh, and then outside of the culture, there's, there's um, uh, you know, the ideas of black man, men, again, um, related to colonialism and, and, and slavery being dangerous, being angry, um, sexually deviant, violent, um, and so on, um, but never vulnerable. Um, and that's such a, 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 a massive part of the human condition. So, um, so taking this um this piece to Bethlehem is really hugely important to me because you know training as a as a, as a psychotherapist um you know it is a, a world which does tend to be peopled predominantly by white people and it's a disproportionate number of black people in the mental health system and, and therein is a problem so um uh, as, as well as training myself as a psychotherapist or being a psychotherapist myself it's really important in the Bethlehem um, to have a, a, a platform where clinicians can actually hear um, what black men um, experience, both in the mental health system,
but also get a more of an understanding of of um yeah the, the kind of pressures and 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 the things kind of involved yeah it's a very unique gallery space there isn't it in terms mm. of its reach um to many different people um and many different audiences at once mm. yeah yeah and you obviously it's part of your art practice is very much engaged with your work as a psychotherapist how does that balance out in terms of your time and how you uh, continue to work as an artist with these different kinds of practices do you find that's that's quite a um, knitted together kind of it's a challenge well? it's, yeah, a challenge. it's, it's <laughs> a real challenge um, because obviously there is a commitment to uh, the people that you're working with um, and you know often with your arts practice when you're actually creating work um, you know as, as you know it's it's not something that you can just kind of fit into like I'll just do it this day and then I'll do it that day so I, I can't really say that I've 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 managed to work out what the what the golden formula is at the moment um, um, but so far so good I've managed to um, obviously create black men's minds uh, but also um, you know managed to sort of get it into platforms or onto platforms in different different spaces um, to to get people to see it as well. Yeah, I've enjoyed I've enjoyed how it's been sort of the work has revealed itself differently in different contexts in that way. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I look forward to seeing it in Bethlehem. Um, yeah. I know I know your previous work, but this is the first work where it's been informed by your new practice, if you like, so your health practice. Yeah. So um, I'm really excited to see it. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to add in relation to arts and health before we leave the topic here today? Um, I mean, it, just to talk about the, the exhibition, it's, it's quite different. I mean, you've seen it at, at, at uh, BCA and you're going to see it at Bethlehem. Um, you know, what's really interesting for me is to kind of keep something really fresh. Um, and um, so it, it, it has a different kind of, um, not a different feel to it, but um, trying different things um, to think about the, the mind. That's interesting. So not only the venues change, but you adapt to the venues as well. So it's yeah, it's site specific. Yeah, and I I don't yeah. like the idea of just kind of kind of transporting something from a circle and putting it into a square. So there are things you know that you can do things that are relevant to the content, so that you can you can you can develop it as as it kind of moves around or evolve it as it moves around. And I think that's that's really important. And I I really like how it's worked out at the Bethlehem. Exciting. That's a very lovely uh, metaphor to end on of adaption of square pegs and round holes or the other way around. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I'm excited to see that. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for, to, for giving your time again today. And um, I urge everybody watching this to check it out in Bethlehem in London when it opens on. When does it open? It's opened. Um, it's open. It opened on the 28th and it closes on the 7th. So it's only a short run, but it's, uh, but yeah. Lovely. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye bye.